Hello and welcome on 360 Sports. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Well, uh, we have to talk about sports and activities that have from just uh, yesterday. A lot of activities in the world of basketball where, as we, sell, as we actually talk about sport this morning, we talk about a team that did well in their encounter at the MQ Abiola Stadium. Talking about Rivers Hoopers, they are celebrating for winning the Super 8 Basketball League. Uh, they did well ahead of Gombe Bulls. They played in the final and it was a big one. Now, starting from that particular story, I will be uh, actually be having a guest in the studio, uh, a man that has really done well when it comes to sport analysis, uh, talking about Peters Olawale. Good to have you. Thank you so much. It's mm. my pleasure being here again. Good one. Now, let's go straight to the activities that we have for you on this show. Let's talk about uh, some basketball stories where Rivers Hoopers, they did well defeating Gombe Bulls in their encounter at the MQ Abela Stadium where they have uh, actually fought hard to win a Gaza team from the Savannah Conference. Rivers Hoopers, now they've won back-to-back -back the uh, Super League, Super uh, Basketball League, the Super 8, where eight teams uh, for this event, eight teams actually came to play in this particular eight uh, teams, uh, uh, competition rather. But the good thing is that Rivers Hoopers, they finally are celebrating winning that comp particular competition ahead of all that teams in the third place. You have uh, Kano Pillars defeating, uh, they, def they did well defeating Customs in their own encounter also to win the third place in the championship. But the good thing right now is that the, f the basketballers, they are happy that basketball is back. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised about the River Upas winning winning the league, mm. um, the match yesterday. Going by their history, and they they came on board in 2009, and between 2009 and today, they won the championship three times. They won it in 2010 and 2011, and they won it also in 2019. And playing with the Gombe Bulls, and you know, and a team that has been um, in existence since 19. 85 and they, they won the they won the league only once mm. that was in 2018 mm. for the uh, the pass before the pass won it also i think that is um, is not an issue however if you look at the qualifying stages also you observe and notice that the two teams they met in which the river pass also <laughs> defeated the Gumbi Bulls. So, and yesterday match, I was thinking it's going to be like a form of revenge. Oh, you dealt with me during the qualifying stages. Then this time for I'll me, take my own I'll take my flesh. own. But uh, they show their superiority when it comes to when it comes to the match. And so, uh, we we should be wishing the River Upas all the best to represent Nigeria very well. They did it in May when they represented the country at the um, basketball. Yeah. League Africa. League Africa. So they are going to represent Nigeria this time around. So I'm sure they've learned from the mistake they made during the, the last edition in May, which they were knocked out during the um, qualifying stages. So we wish them all the best. Okay, now we're talking about uh, Rivers who has doing so well, winning the uh, Super 8 Basketball League in Nigeria. Well, right now they are celebrating, and it's a good one for the fact that they did it back to back, and now they're representing Nigeria in the Basketball League Africa uh, that will be coming up later. Uh, well, the good thing right now is that basketballers, they were so happy for the fact that they came together, they saw and they conquered Kano Pillars, Gumbe Bulls, Rivers for Hoopers, Quara Falcons, Customs, all these teams, even Benway Braves, they were there to showcase their basketball uh, skills. Now, we were there also to at least capture those uh, particular uh, moments and we just have this for you.
I will give you up so that, that team Rivers who pass they celebrated winning the Super 8 uh, basketball league. We just have to celebrate them. Entire uh, squads that participated in that particular event uh, counts are there. A good one there. Now let's leave basketball. A big one that happened also yesterday while basketball was taking place at the Abuja Stadium over there in Lagos. Super Eagles of Nigeria. Uh, they were doing their own thing too. But it was a very difficult situation because a lot of Nigerians were scared when it was 1-1 uh, in that particular match. Nigeria against Cape Verde it ended up in a, in a draw, but we still qualify for the knockout uh, playoffs that will be coming up later, or hopefully that should be in March. But as it is, we are out from, we have qualified from the group stage now, this particular qualifiers to the knockout stage. Then I recall yesterday you were saying Eagles must win. All of us agree that Eagles must win and Eagles drew. Although they needed a draw to qualify. But a win would have been the icing on the cake, which they removed the icing and only had the cake. So, right, as it is, your take on this particular game. <sighs> okay, and yesterday's match was very embarrassing to watch. Mm. And um, looking at the lineup, like we um, discussed yesterday, I don't know the reason why we'll be playing for a win and we have a coach giving us a lineup of five defenders, three center midfielders. No, uh, three center uh, de def de defenders. defenders. Yes, we have three midfielders. From the three midfielders we have, two old midfielders. The only attacking midfielder we had yesterday on pitch was Alex uh, Wobi. And we have two striker. Or let me say we have one and a half striker up there. That is Victor Osime and. Half of Igalo. Igalo. <laughs> what happened? So Igalo will have come in as a substitute. Okay. Not to start the match. The match. So what we need, we need a, we should be going for a win. So not to be looking for a draw. And if you look at the, the resources available to our coach, the value of all the players we had yesterday, they worth 173 million pounds. That is the value of, of that team. Of that team yesterday. And we have a coach that we are paying forty-five thousand dollars per month. That's about eighteen point something million. Every month. Every month. And the best they could give us is what they gave us yesterday. It's, we shouldn't be in this situation. Now, like you rightly captured, good adjective, we escape to the playoff. So while we're playing now, there's a new FIFA rule. A lot of people thought that we've qualified. We've not qualified. We have not. We are still going to play, do a playoff. The draw will come up by December next month. So then the playoff will be done home and away March next year. So how is it going to happen? We have the top five team in line with FIFA ranking to meet the, the, the second. The second yes. So who are we likely to meet? We're likely to meet Egypt, Ghana, Cameroon, Mali, and the uh, Democratic Republic of, of Congo. Congo. With what we played yesterday, if we meet any of these team, it's bye-bye. And I believe we cannot afford to sit down at home, be watching other players, other country, flying their flag at the World Cup. At the World Cup, and our own fatherland will be seated doing nothing. We cannot afford that. The players yesterday, they play without a pattern, without a style, without a passion. I don't know what happened. They play more like a secondary school student. Kick and follow. A whole super egos. A whole super egos. The giant of Africa. At least, okay, now let's look at in this area. When, you know, before the match, Ahmed Musa was saying they are, they, all they need is to win. And it's very common that each, before each match, they will be saying they want to win, they want to win. Like I always say, they give Nigerians high blood, blood, blood pressure because uh, it's, it's very rare that Nigerian super egos will play and you'll be, you'll be worried. You'll be worried. And it's not supposed to be so. We still remember, still up till 1994, 1996, 1998 before uh, football begins to slow down. If Nigeria wants to play, you can beat your chest. That is either 2-0, 3-1, they are going to win. That, that winning mentality was there. What do you think happened? What happened to our super egos? It has also started, cre it's creeping into the ladies, super falcons. What is happening to our football? Okay, um, I think we need to review the, the whole technical crew mm. of our 
um, the, the, team. The, 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 the team. Like I said earlier, we had a team that worth 173 million pounds. million pounds at your disposal as a coach. So what we lack is the technical know-how. Know <clears throat> that is what we lack. You are playing a tournament like this, World Cup qualifiers, and you went with only five midfielders, nine attackers, and seven strikers. Yes, let's give it to him. He was uh, a defender in his playing time. Playing time, he played right back. So he's more of a defensive person. And that's not what we need. We, I remember those days in the the, the the days of JJ Okosha. This is a guy that will hold the ball, distribute the ball, dribble one, two, three. A At goal least will come. He spread the he cool the game, spread the ball, and everybody gets what they deserve. Then we goals the, will come. We have the Siasia, we have the Daniel Amukachi. All through the 90 minutes yesterday, Nigeria didn't have a successful six or seven passes. We don't have successful six or seven passes. What we did all through is just like what Ahmed Musa said, we want to win, we want to win, we want to win. Where would that take us to? Mm. So what we need to do is to sit down, review the technical uh, team we have in, in place. Is there a need for us to continue with them? Because I, I, I'm not going to agree with you that we don't have the resources. We have abundance of resources, both home and abroad. On weekend, Saturday and Sunday, drive right around Abuja, Kano, Lagos, Bauchi. Every area, every you, city. You nooks and crannies. Nooks and cranny. Talented. Talents. We are highly talented when it comes to that. But how to make use of our resources, it's the problem. And our coach has been in Africa since 2010. So there's no excuse that doesn't know the terrain um, of African yeah, football. He has coached Gabon before, he has coached Benin Republic before, Burkina Faso, and he has been in Nigeria since 2000 and, 2016. Now, I want to come in here. Now, someone, I saw it on Twitter that said, why does it take time for Coach Ganoro to make <clears throat> substitution? Why is he always very uh, either late or difficult to change, to remove? Is he, is he that he doesn't want to change players? as in substituting players how, how do you see it or is it that he doesn't know who to substitute or what okay that happens when you don't have a style of play mm. when you don't go to a match with okay let me the first the first 30 minutes i want to play tiki taka let me see these are the players that i have for it the next 20 minutes i want to hold home the next 15 minutes i want to play attacking football if you don't have that style as a coach if you don't have that tactics as a coach what we saw yesterday is what, you'll be is what we'll be getting. So you don't know what to do, where to start from, and where to go to. So that's why you remain stagnant. You'll be scared to take a decision. Now, does that call for the issue of a gra you know, grassroots football development in Nigeria? We know that the biggest monster are facing it, uh, issue of godfatherism, not, not fielding the right player for the age grade competitions, where we can easily pick players. Because in Super Eagles now, we know that we even have players in our grassroots football that can be better, but just because they play abroad, this place in Nigeria, they, they, they won't have the chance to be filled, to be put on the pitch to play. Because federalism is there, not allowing them to be picked. Issue of uh, age cheat, someone is 20, is playing under 13, under 12, all these things. Could it be the reason why it's hard? For someone like Coach Ganoro to say, okay, I want to pick players from the local league, or from the way it is, it doesn't have any flair for local league players. Now, the foreign players that we bring, look at what they play. What can we do? Okay, and I'm going to give it to Ganoro on this. He's a great poacher. Mm. He knows how to source for talents. But how to make use, of the, use of the talent, it's the problem. So maybe we should just turn him to, from being our coach to be what? A scout. A scout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just changed the position now. To a scout. Being our coach because he scout. doesn't know how to manage the resources he has. Both internal, look at Western Half, mm. Bonfrey Joe. Look at what they, they did. They know in this how country. to manage. They know how to manage. They know how to scout. And also. they know how to source. They players. even know how to develop. Mm. So we have that. So, but he doesn't have it. So it is high time we think of what to do. Or he has a mandate. The mandate when they renew his contract, one, to win the Nations Cup for us. In January, February. In January, February in Cameroon. I don't know the magic is going to perform. Mm. Then also to qualify us 
for the World, for the World Cup. Cup. Now, for us to get the qualification to World Cup, we need more than a miracle. We are sitting on a tight, very tight rope. We road need now. more than a miracle to do that. Then to win the Nations Cup against Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Senegal, Ghana, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire. You didn't add those two. I don't know. I, don't, I have to stop. I have to stop. I don't know where to go. What has happened to our football? We need to go back to the grassroots development. Like I said. We need to start it. I remember in our days, then when we were in secondary school, Principal Cup used to be one of something we look forward to. Nationally, everyone Nationally, wants to play. Principal Cup, we have that one. Inter-house uh, inter sports. Sport. We don't have Governor's that. Cup. Governor's Cup. We don't have that again. So we have people from abroad coming to this country to poach for players for players during that period. But we don't have that again. So everybody, <laughs> like the popular saying, they want to japa. Mm. To go and end that big money. To go and end that big money. Okay, maybe I should just let you for that uh, 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 super egos. Uh, we're going to bring this particular uh, uh, up, uh, uh, this is topic of next time. Well, quickly, because of our time, news came out that Frank Lampard, Frank Lampard uh, uh, right now is targeting Leicester City. Uh, if that is if Brenda Rogers moved to Manchester United, I'm like, how that permutation <laughs> we know what because yesterday was Nathan Zidane, now it's Leicester City that Frank Lampard is looking at. If Rogers will move to Man U briefly, okay. And Lampard is taking Nigeria style of if, if, and if happens. So, who mm. told him or how sure are we that Brenda Rogers will leave Leicester City with a good performance they are having right now and go to Man U? Mm. Yesterday it was the day. Today is Brendan Rogers. Tomorrow, you don't know, maybe it's going to be Ancelotti mm. or someone else. And to be honest and be sincere, I think Lampard should start from from beginning. Okay. He should start from Look beginning. Look for a smaller team. A smaller team, build up from there. And there was a rumor that he wanted to go to Norwich, Nick has to. Then all that, nothing happened again. I think he should start from there. Just like we have um, Aston Villa, that's Aston Villa, Gerard. That's Gerard right, right now is with Aston, Aston Villa. Let him start from there. So not to start from a Leicester a, a City, big, uh, a big team. The same thing that happened that made him to lose his job about 10 months ago mm. in Chelsea may still happen because he won't be able to manage the talent, the resources, and the experience and the competency will not really, really be there. Mm. There is a very young player that played for Red Bull Salzburg in Austrian League. He's uh, Karim Adeyemi. Karim Adeyemi right now is so fantastic in world of football that a lot of clubs are already courting this young man. Karim Adeyemi right now is being courted by Barcelona. Barcelona are looking up at getting Karim to join them, despite the fact that they have financial <laughs> crisis. Okay, um, Karim Adeyemi, it's a fantastic player, and he played at the Austrian and uh, Austrian mm. Bundesliga. He has played 13 matches. He scored 11 goals. Then the Champions League, he played four matches, three goals and one assist. So he's, he's, he's very hot. Now. So he's very hot right now. But I pray it doesn't make the mistake the, the likes of Mikel will be made. Mm. During the FIFA under 20 in 2005 at Netherlands, Messi of this world and Mikel will be. They were there together. They were there together at mm. par. Look at the way they were. Look at, yes, we're even like, oh, Messi, uh, Mikel will be better than Messi. Even more because Argentina won at the final 2 1 on penalty and Messi scored. Probably the most valuable player will have gone to, to Mikel. Mikel. But he got the silver, Mikel. And what happened to him after the match? Manchester came Chelsea. calling. Chelsea came calling. I don't know what motivated him to go to Chelsea. Mm. But it's Mikel supposed to be the natural successor to JJ Okusha. Okusha. But that doesn't happen. He went to Chelsea. Jose Mourinho changed Change is, is, uh, from being pattern. offensive and attacking midfielder to a defensive, defensive midfielder. And the rest is story today now. We know where Mikel is and we know where Messi is. I think you shouldn't make that mistake. Number one, you should look at where he can have more playing time. He's a centre forward and he plays from the wing also. So he has that flexibility of where to play. But where he's going to have more playing time should be his priority. Where he's going to develop, where he's going to grow as a player should mm. be his, apart from Barcelona, his childhood club, because he came from uh, Bayern Munich Academy mm. and he's from Munich also, he was born in Munich. So they are also calling for him. So he'd rather go to where he's, he, uh, he understands the terrain. Very well. Mm -hmm. Because she'll be looking at now, she'll be looking at the future, what will happen to him in the next two, three 
and four, four years. Yeah. After all, it's just 19 it's years just old. just 19 years old. Mm. So you still, have, still, time. You still have time. Yeah. Still Good have time. one. We also appreciate the fact that you've given us so much analysis on sports. This is the sports today. We really appreciate you next time. I'm sure you're going to give much more uh, depth into those analysis. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. It's mine. Good one, as we know that a lot of activities will be coming up in the world of sport, as we always give it to you here on 360 Sport. We've been talking about uh, Super Eagles, I've been talking about Lampard, not forgetting Karim Adem, and the team that is right now celebrating Rivers Hoopers of uh, River State. They are happy they won the Super uh, Basketball League. Kudos to the entire team that played that competition and to the organizers. And we want to say on this uh, particular time that sport is business. And fitness. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.